Hey everyone, uh, so we're going to do a really quick repair on the Freelancer today. Uh, so we're going to be doing the brake light switch, which I hear is quite a common issue on these Freelanders. Uh, I believe mine is faulty. Um, when I press the brake pedal, it doesn't always light up the brake uh, lights. So I did unclick the old one, uh, pressed the little piston in, and it wasn't. It was only activating the brake lights probably one in every ten presses. So in fairness, that's wrong. I do believe this can also cause the three amigos uh, issue on the Freelanders if it goes wrong. Um, but I'll have to double check that. Uh, so again, this one uh, has been sponsored. So APD, who sponsored me for the MAF sensor, have also sponsored me for this one. So they've sent out um, a new brake light switch, which is really, really good of them. Um, I do believe they're going to become like one of the mainline sponsors of this channel, which is a monumental help uh, to myself um, and this channel. Um, you know, it's not always cheap doing this and, you know, it's, it's difficult because I want to get as much information out as I can to help you guys out and anyone who has these issues. Um, and it's so good that, you know, someone else is there to sort of help and sort of bring that up with the channel. So, um, you know, a huge thank you to APD and I'm really looking forward to kind of any future ventures that we have because uh, there's a lot of stuff i got planned for the Freelander, a lot of stuff I need to repair on the Freelander as well, typical Land Rover. Um, so yeah, really, really excited about that. But anyway, uh, onto the brake light switch. So this is what they look like. It's just a little, uh, well, no, brake light switch. So this is your piston here that activates your brake lights when you press your brake pedal in. So on the Freelander, it's a bit different. So normally on cars I've worked on in the past, they're either behind or in front of your, your brake pedal. And as you press uh, the pedal in, it will either push in or push away or pull away from it. And that's what activates your brake lights. On the Freelander, strangely, it faces upwards, of course. Uh, so you press the brake pedal in and it activates something that pushes down and pushes this down, which then activates it. So it's a bit different to normal cars. It's a bit awkward. Um, I didn't initially know where to look. I was trying to find something where you conventionally find it, and it wasn't finding anything. So I found one, and I thought I'd do a quick video just to show you guys um, where they are and how to change them. It's a really quick, easy job, though. So yeah, hopefully you find this useful, and let's get on with the work. Okay, so when you're looking at your pedals here, please excuse the fact that I do not have carpet, etc. Yours will have that. Um, but yeah, when you're looking at the pedals here, if you come in and flip upside down, I'm hoping you can see it on the camera there. I can't see my screen right now. What I'll do is I will mark it on the screen uh, with, a, with a, some kind of, well, there's something to mark it up so you know exactly where it is. But yeah, so you have to sort of go in and underneath. Um, it's relatively, relatively easy to get out, so... Uh, Let's go and remove okay, so it. To get the sensor out, uh, what you're going to have to do is uh, release your inner gymnast uh, and you're going to have to go in backwards upside down. So, just going to be leaning in, getting in underneath, and now you're in the right position to reach the sensor quite easily. Okay, so now you're lying upside down, back to front, and inside out. Uh, you're going to be looking up into the footwell. Uh, so, this is what you're going to be looking up at. So, this is your brake pedal here. And I'm not actually lying down, I'm doing this with the phone screen, so it's a bit awkward. Where are you? There we go. So there is the sensor that we're looking for. So that's our brake light switch there. So I find it easier to unplug it first, uh, which is on whoop, this end here, which is the white one. It's just one of those sort of, uh, you push in the bottom here and pinch it and it will pull out. So that is that now unplugged, as you can see there. So that's that out of the way. It is really weird doing this without actually lying upside down to be able to see it. So now our sensor's unplugged, we're just going to twist it and eventually it will drop out. There we go. Okay, so there is the old one out. So nice little uh, box and a push switch. There's our new one, looks exactly the same. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it in reverse. So we're gonna get this in, twist it in, and then get that plug in there. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna be using the phone screen for this, so I do apologize if I'm sort of fumbling about a little bit, but uh, yeah, let's get it in and get it switched. Okay, so this is the hole that it leaves, um, the two prongs and the circular hole there. Okay, so you've got those two holes, that circular prong. So on here, you've got these two legs. One of those will go into each of those prongs and it turns up in. I might not be able to record myself getting it in because it's a big, bit awkward having the camera in the way on the floor whilst trying to twist it in. Um, but yeah, so you've got those two little legs. They go into each of those prong holes and then the circle bit up through the middle and it will twist in. So uh, let's do that next bit now. Okay, so there is our sensor back in. 
So, where's my hands? So I'm using the camera again. There's our new sensor back in there, twisted in. Uh, there is the ports, and here is the lead. So it's just going to be a case of making sure they line up properly, get my torch out of the way. So I'm using my phone screen again, so I'm doing this all backwards to myself because it mirrors everything. There we go. So then that just clicks in, and that is the sensor replaced. Okay, so that's the sensor replaced, so all we've got left to do now is test to see if the brake lights are working. So what I had before, uh, what I actually did before is I untwisted the old one, pulled it out, this is a good way to diagnose, uh, and I just clicked this in a few times just to make sure anything happened and it didn't. So I was pressing this and like I say, every, one in every ten, uh, it was probably lighting up, um, so evidently something is going wrong in that that unit, hopefully. Um, so yeah, all we've got to do now is test the brake lights to make sure they're all working for us. Okay, so there we go. So the uh, brake lights are all working fine now, which is fantastic. Uh, no more flickering, no more intermittency to them. So yeah, really happy with that. Uh, a huge thank you goes out to APD and they will be putting all the links down below uh, for that uh, that brake light switch that they've uh, well, very kindly sent to me. Uh, so yeah, brake lights all working and they say a pretty simple fix all in all. Uh, it's just you just twist it out, twist it back in, well, unplug, plug back in again. So yeah, really quick, easy, five minute job and hopefully one that helps you guys out as well. So thank you.